All right, look, I'm not going to pretend that I'm cooler than I am. Movies like Die Hard 4 appealed to me a lot as a teenager due to the hacker aesthetics and introduction of cool nerds, and watching Tony Stark build stuff in 3D using augmented reality in the theater during Iron Man absolutely woke something up inside of me. Augmented reality, or AR, has always appealed to me, and I've kept a close eye, pun intended, on AR devices from Google Glass to the mystical Microsoft HoloLens to modern VR and AR headsets, but I hadn't yet invested in it. Then I saw this YouTube short where graffiti artist Bond used a 3D modeling app on the Quest 3 to build his tag shape, then project that onto a wall in AR and actually tag it with graffiti in real life, basically using the design layers as virtual stencils. And I knew this was the future. I pulled the funds and ordered a Quest 3 that day. Now, I'd honestly rather have an Apple Vision Pro for this as the pass-through capabilities are significantly better there, but the Quest 3 provides great performance for the price. Now, alongside the Quest 3, I have two more AR devices at this point, and I thought it was time to make a video about how the heck these things work in this video sponsored by ARM. Today, let's primarily focus on the AR side of things, as it works in a few different ways, and perhaps in the future we can dive in on the full VR experience that something like the Quest provides. For AR, let's take a look at a couple examples of how this can be done. First, I have the Ray-Ban X Meta glasses. These have a camera and speakers but nothing over top of my eyes. They're just normal sunglasses in that regard. Instead of giving visual feedback over your view of the world, these glasses provide audio feedback using teeny tiny directional speakers. These speakers honestly sound pretty great for what they are. They sound as if I was wearing earbuds directly into my ears. The camera is used for taking photo and videos, of course, with a vertical aspect ratio and a decent level of H.265 quality for the size of this thing. That's what I use them the most for. POV shots of making stuff is always fun. But from there, you can easily share photos and videos directly on social media or even live stream directly to Facebook and Instagram if that's your thing. Beyond that, the more unique features come in with the AI assistant that runs on these. You can use your voice to take photos and videos, make calls, control media, and that sort of thing. But you can also just ask it questions to, you know, do web searches, research, and so on. You can then take it a step further and have it analyze what you're looking at. Obviously, you got to point the camera part at it, but then the AI assistant can look with your camera to directly see your perspective and give you some information about the world around you. Hey, Meta. What am I looking at? You were looking at a collection of arcade machines and video games. Hey, Meta. What does the text say on this box? The text on the box says, I see why box three and one display port adapter. It also lists the different types of connections it supports, including HDMI, 506, and VGA. Not bad. I've heard that this is useful to visually impaired people by helping to read menus or text or tell you the color of something, which is wild stuff. This is possible thanks to the ARM-powered processor inside. ARM designs powerful, efficient processors that companies can use to make innovative devices where you wouldn't expect such a powerful processor to be able to go, like the Meta Ray-Ban glasses. How crazy is it that glasses that are barely bigger than normal sunglasses can have a full AI assistant and photo and video camera built right in? ARM is powering the future through innovations in power efficiency, computing performance, and AI processing. ARM touches 100% of the connected global population and is in devices all around us. Without them, the innovations I get to talk about on this channel all the time just wouldn't be possible. AR devices can also overlay information in front of you visually, such as with the Vuzix Blade 2. Using a teeny tiny projector and something called waveguide optics, it projects a tiny screen over the lens, allowing you to see information without obstructing your view. Paired with speakers, a camera, and again, an ARM-based processor, you can take photos and videos and run a variety of apps directly on the glasses for all sorts of productivity tasks. There's apps for managing remote desktops using either the side of the glasses or your phone as a trackpad, web browsers, communication tools, presentation tools, a teleprompter, a media player. There's also a big focus on workforce-oriented use cases, such as working with a remote worker in AR to fix machinery, work on healthcare scenarios, and provide tech support. There's also tools for the visually impaired, such as a tool that maps the live camera view into soundscapes to help the blind see through sound cues, and uh, another that can read text or inform them about physical objects in the view of the camera. Again, it is wild stuff that they're coming up with for this kind of thing. And honestly, this is just the beginning. Things are evolving fast. We're in the we're still in the early generations of this kind of technology being small enough to be wearable as a consumer product. I think in the next five years, we will see some radical innovations in the software side of this tech and more neat stuff like more displays in AR glasses and probably some sensors we haven't even heard of yet. Like this, compared to my first attempt at trying out a VR headset like eight years ago now, it's mind boggling how much better things are. The Quest 3, 
headset, by the way, as a full VR headset, better than years of VR hardware that has come before it like I had. So it takes everything to the next level. You're presented with a full dedicated screen over each eye and a variety of cameras and sensors to detect, map, and track your environment and your hands. This lets you use your hands as controllers or flip on pass-through mode and see the world around you through the cameras with software overlaid on top. That is how this graffiti example that I did showed in the intro was done. You can pin windows to specific surfaces that stay in place when you move and interact with your world with extra digital information. The depth sensors allow for occlusion, where digital objects can appear behind or around real-world objects. Spatial anchoring, locking digital objects in the real world, like I mentioned before, and interaction between virtual objects and the real environment, such as bouncing a virtual ball off a real table. All of this also helps to avoid motion sickness and headaches, a big issue for older VR headsets for me at least, and lets you game or work longer, staying more comfortable through it. Unlike VR headsets of old, you don't need to hang tons of sensors around your space to use the Quest 3. It uses inside-out tracking, meaning it maps the world from around you from within the headset itself, allowing for quicker setup and more flexibility as to where you use it. It also allows the use of a guardian system to define a safe area to move and play in without running into walls or falling down stairs. Or I always use the example of me reaching up and hitting my hand on a fan. Uh, that one's on me though. All of these sensors, depth data, camera feeds, and rendering the digital content of your 3D in your world in 3D requires a lot of power, which ARM delivers in spades here. I'm still in my early experiments of using AR for creating art and making things, but I will continue exploring the space and trying to make the most of it. I think we'll unlock tons of creative potential in the years to come. To learn about how ARM is powering my music production in completely different ways, check the video here and remember to be kind. Rewind.